Hey all, I'm Anders, and welcome back, once again, to the Angmar Project. So far, we converted and painted up a horde of orcs in their command, so now it's time to turn our gaze to some more of the elite units in the list, starting with some undead. One of the best units in the Angmar list is the Spectres, as they not only cause terror, but can hit well above their weight with the Blades of the Dead special rule, and most importantly, really mess up the enemy lines with their Fell Light ability. However, I had a problem here. These profiles are very clearly based off the Spectres from the Dead Marshes. I mean, it's even in their name. But the Dead Marshes are here, and Angmar is up here. So I once again want to make mine a bit more unique, and try to come up with some new ideas. The main thing I wanted to do was make them a bit more generic looking, for lack of a better term, as I didn't want them to be so clearly dead elves or Numenorians or such. My personal headcanon is that when the Witch King moved into the north, he established his fortress of Karn Dune on the ruins of some more ancient city, as so happens in Middle-earth. And then finding those laid to dead in the tombs and catacombs beneath the castle, he raises them to serve his army. This allows me to not worry about sticking to any established armor or clothing styles as they were from some old civilization long forgotten, which was very freeing. Next, I was once again inspired by art. Back in 2019, before the dark year, I went on vacation to Madrid and visited the Prado Museum, where I saw a ton of spectacular artwork. Some of which stood out to me were the works of Goya, Bosch, and Bruegel, as they were incredibly atmospheric and certainly weren't afraid to get weird. I mean, look at that. What? Okay, sure. In particular, I kept thinking back to the Triumph of Death by Peter Bruegel the Elder, as it's just such a unique and twisted looking piece. I've read that this is heavily influenced by the Black Plagues, as it shows the dead disrupting all aspects of the citizens' everyday lives. In particular, I love how abstract the undead are, as they are clearly skeletal, but still seem to have skin stretched over the elongated and lanky bodies. And so I really wanted to bring that into the models. As always, we start by picking out parts. The main ones I went for being once again the Warlord Games and Oathmark Orcs, some assorted Perry Miniatures figures, my Bits box, and finally, the all-important Citadel Skull box. So I spent a while working through them, and while they all turned out a bit different, here's how I approached it. I mostly used Perry Miniatures for the bodies, and Warlord Game Orcs for the legs and arms. I used those for the limbs in particular, as they were some of the only pieces I had that were bare skin. And that combined with the slightly larger scale of those models, meant that I got that lanky look I wanted. I also used a lot of skulls for the heads to bring in that skeleton look, and those were all from the Citadel Skull Box. I also tried to vary this a little bit by combining clothed limbs with bare ones to make it look a bit more tattered. I finished by applying some green stuff, mainly to fill in gaps, but also to sculpt some extra bits of cloth and such here and there. I also sculpted some more flesh around the necks of the minis to kind of blend the skulls into the rest of the models, as if there was some rotten skin sticking to them. For the bases, I went pretty simple to match the rest of the army, and just used some PVA glue and dumped them in my mix of decorative sand, baking powder, and kitty litter. Before we go into painting though, I did want to drop a quick message. I've mentioned it before, but I do have a Patreon set up, and I would like to thank my new patrons, J Mac and Justin, and also to announce a bit of a relaunch. I'm going to be adding some new rewards and such to the tiers, which include some dice. Namely, the first 25 people to sign up will be getting a set of four exclusive Founders dice, and also the ability to vote and suggest potential other perks going forward, like a private group chat or something like that. And when I say exclusive, I do mean exclusive. I've ordered a custom batch made through Chessex, and once the Founders dice are gone, I'll never order any more. I did, however, also have some done in an alternate color scheme, which will be the standard going forward for any future sales or giveaways. So if you are enjoying the videos, please take a minute to maybe pop over there, as the more support I get, the more I can do to make these videos better and more often. But for now, on to the painting. I primed the specters just like my orcs, using a blue followed by a Zenithal spray of light brown over top before painting up a test model, which honestly, I wasn't much of a fan of. The colors were a bit off, and I found it really didn't stick out as much as I wanted. I even tried painting up the eyes to look glowing, but decided against it. 
So I painted a second test model, but for this, I stuck to much darker colors like grays and browns. And I found this helped to make the paler skin really pop, which made the whole model stand out a lot more. And with that, we were off. While I did do the same underpainting technique from my orc video on the test two models, I decided not to with the rest of them, as I didn't see enough of an effect to justify the time. So I went straight into applying the base colors with some thin glazes. Namely, I applied Rakoff Flesh to all the skin and bones, a very dark blue to the main section of cloth which I made by mixing a bat in black with Macrag blue, white mixed with Dawnstone for the extra bits of cloth which I would end up highlighting to white, Macrag blue for the base, and finally Mornfang brown for all the straps. For the weapons and metal, I painted most of it very dark by mixing some gun metal in with some black, and then made some select bits gold by mixing Balthazar gold with Rhinox hide. Then, to mix it up, I actually painted all the scabbards and hilts of the weapons in a red to match the artwork, but to make sure this wasn't too much, I first mixed it with a dark brown to start off. Then, to get that warm to cold transition I like, I applied some washes. I did this by applying Draconoff Nightshade to the bottom half of the model and the base, as well as any undersections like the bottom of their arms, and then Agrax Earthshade to the top half. I did this while the nightshade was still wet, so that I could mix them together a bit to blend it. Then I finished up the base by dry brushing it with Xandri Dust, picking out rocks with Dawnstone, dry brushing again with Screaming Skull, before finally a last dry brush of white. For the rest of the non-metallics, I highlighted them all in the same way, by mixing more and more white into my base color and applying it in really rough layers. This was a great example of how useful a wet palette can be, as I did this over the course of a couple days, and all my paint stayed wet and usable the whole time. For the highlights, I took special time to make sure the shapes around the eye sockets and nose were the brightest parts of the skin, and to highlight right up to pure white on the cloth. For the metal, I wanted this to look really worn, and so I first stippled some pure gunmetal to the already dark and washed bits, before mixing up sort of my own contrast paint using Mornfang Brown and contrast medium, and applying this liberally in sections to the armor to give it a really rusty look. Then I was feeling a bit inspired to incorporate some more colors into these guys, namely after watching a lot of 52 miniatures videos, as I just love how he incorporates really strong colors into his pieces, and so decided to add a bit of blue-green to the metal for a kind of oxidization look. I did this by mixing Talisar Blue contrast paint with some Moot Green, and finally some hex wraith flame, and applied this in a few patches to the armor. Once all that was dried, I went in and did a final stippled highlight of silver to the metal before adding tufts, rubbing the bases, and we were done. I know I always say this, but <laughs> I love these guys. I feel like they both look suitably creepy, but also kind of whimsical, which is totally the look I was going for. Also, at the end of the day, they are just kind of skeletal zombies, so will work great in other games I'm interested in, like Frostgrave or maybe even Mordheim. With those done, thank you all again for the support. It's a new year, and I'm so happy to be able to start it off with such a fantastic audience. So, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, please do so so you can see how this project continues. And also, maybe go back and check out the first two videos. And if you're looking for more stuff, hop over onto Instagram, Twitter, or even TikTok, as I've got some stuff over there now too. For now, thank you again. I'm Anders, and have a good one.